Okay, so what I want to do is run through a whole series of videos on the common defects that we find in the bikes. So, um, you know, give you a visual uh, understanding of the sorts of things that we're looking for that can be problematic and cause um, fatigue damage or um, you know, even catastrophic failure. Um, so these things, um, the things that we're going to look at are often not visible um, on the surface. So we'll find it with ultrasound scan or by cutting up the bike or you know, the other, other methods. So, so the, first, uh, the first topic uh, that I'll, I'll run through today is going to be resin dry. So resin dry is where there isn't enough resin in the fibre. So the fibre is unsupported. And so each individual filament of carbon can't transfer load to the filament next to it. And so that's how it works with, uh, with carbon material, particularly in compression and shear load. So if you picture a, a piece of string, if you pull the piece of string, it can, take, it can take the load, no problem. But in compression, when you're pushing it together, it, it can't take any load because the fibers aren't able to transfer load to the next fiber. So, um, so that's what the resin does, and, and the resin holds everything together, holds the shape. So obviously, if there's no resin in, in the material, then you, you've got a, a serious problem. So um, it, it can be difficult, uh, it can be very difficult to find, um, you know, particularly if it's internal, so you can, if you have a, a, a resin-starved situation. So the, uh, the examples that I'll show you Today they were found uh, ultrasonically um, because the reflection of the signal is, is, is different um, on the interface and then I've sectioned up those samples and, um, and, and I'll show you those visually. So, so it's, uh, it, it, it's one of those things that, um, you know, that and along with uh, the, the, the curing of the resin, um, these sort of things, they contribute significantly to the to the properties of the bike. So, um, so what we'll do is I'll um, I'll bring out these examples and um, and we'll run through those, and and I'll show you what it looks like. So, um, yeah. So off off we go to the uh, to the samples and uh, yeah, let's have a look. So here we have an Edge Composites 2.0 fork. So Edge Composites is the uh, company that turned into Envy. Um, so this is quite uh, quite a few years old, but it came to us as a brand new fork and we did some assessments on it and um, and this one was rejected after the scan for, uh, for resin dry. So I'll turn the fork over and I'll show you the resin dry areas. So if we go in a little bit closer and uh, with the scalpel, I'll just show you, see all these loose fibers and we can just sort of pick the fibers up and uh, yeah so there's these fibers are totally dry there's, there's no resin bonding those to the surface at all so um, you know it goes right from the from where the dropout is sort of molded in and goes up the uh, up the leg and into the crown so so even up in the crown area we've got We've got uh, some dry fiber. So with the thickness of the laminate in that area, it would be, it's unusual that it would be resin, resin starved. So it's probably indicative more of the, um, the process of removing the soluble mandrel has, um, has done something to the surface um, and, and dissolved some of the resin or done something to the resin. That's, that, that's what I'm guessing on this case. So, the, um, it's on the other side, on the other leg as well. So uh, again, same sort of thing. It's um, loose, loose bundles of fibre. So obviously they're not contributing to the structural properties of the uh, of the fork. So that's a, that's a good example of, of resin dry. Um, and now I'll show you another example, which is this time in a frame. Okay, so here we have a, um, it's a Trek Imonda SL. Um, fairly new one, probably only a year or so old. Um, and uh, 
again, we found uh, some resin dry in this region here. So you can see the fibers just being able to lift off with the scalpel. So yeah, they're not bonded, but it's only a fairly small area and uh, it looks like it's limited to, to one ply or, or maybe two, but um, again, so this, this was found, uh, found ultrasonically and um, yeah, it's just isolated on that small area. So the, uh, it's sort of indicative, I suppose, that you know, this is a fairly new, new frame and the rest of the frame is uh, is put together quite well, so there's no other other areas of uh, of concern in terms of the resin resin dry. So all the compaction and the you know there certainly doesn't appear to be any wrinkles or resin pooling. So um, so in this case, the, you know the resin dry is probably more indicative of being a, a, a fault in the material. So you know, the resin content on the prepreg may have been a bit, uh, a bit low in that area or, um, you, know, you know, something along those lines or maybe a bit of localised contamination. But, um, so that's sort of a different, a different example uh, of resin drying. And um, yeah, so they, they, they give you two, two indications of, uh, you know, two examples of what we're looking at. And, um, you know, there's, there are plenty of other sort of other cases, I saw a stem recently inside of the stem, which had um, had that as well. But um, yeah, that certainly gives you an idea of of what to look for. So in this case, you could use a bore scope. You you know you'd have access, and you could have a look down the tube, and you could probably find that um, you know with a with an internal camera. But um, again, nothing uh, nothing visual on the surface. You know, if we if we turn that over. Um, you know, there's there's no there's no visible surface uh, indication of that. So okay, so there you have it. So that's uh, that's some examples of the resin dry, and um, you know you can clearly see that uh, you know, there's an issue with that. The one in the fork in particular, um, you know, very difficult to find visually because um, you can't see into the fork. So um, and with the geometry, you, you you may be able to get a, an internal camera down there, but Again, it was found, uh, found ultrasonically, um, so yeah, we could identify that issue with that fork. So, and that fork, that was uh, a brand new fork, so that hadn't even been used, that fork. So, uh, yeah, so obviously something went, uh, was not quite right in the, uh, in the manufacturing process there. So, the, um, you know, just on that, you know, one of the things that, um, that needs to be considered is with your material supplier, they, uh, they supply the rolls of prepreg and um, they can have issues with their, their resin distribution through the fiber when they're producing the prepreg. So you can't always take it for granted that you buy this roll of material and, and everything's gonna be okay. So you, know, you, you need to inspect the material as, as you're putting it down to make sure that it's, um, it's, it's uniform in, uh, in its properties, etc. So, you know, other things that can, can affect it are contamination. Um, you know, if there's, uh, if there's some um, materials which can contaminate and prevent the, the resin from flowing through the fiber. Um, and then you can also have solvents which can uh, dissolve the resin. So, you know, for instance, uh, if you put paint stripper on, uh, on a carbon epoxy part, a typical carbon epoxy part, the paint stripper, the, the, uh, the methylene chloride that's the active ingredient in the paint stripper will actually dissolve the resin away and then you are left with, uh, with just a fiber. So, yeah. so that's, uh, that's sort of a, a bit of a rundown on, um, on, these, uh, you know, on this topic of, of, of dry fiber. And uh, yeah, as I said, I'm, I'll, I'll bring a series of, uh, of different uh, different uh, defects and, and problems and uh, yeah, so we can uh, get an understanding of these things. So that's it for this episode and uh, yeah, if you, if you like what you see, uh, subscribe to the channel and um, tell your friends and uh, we'll keep bringing this content. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon. Okay, bye.